Hi there, this is Amrish from Piximperfect and today we're going to learn how to retouch newborn photos in Photoshop. This is something which have been requested a lot of times and most of the techniques that we're going to apply today have been covered previously in my previous tutorials in depth. So this tutorial is just an amalgamation, a combination of how to put all of them to use into one image. I hope this will be helpful. So without any further ado, let's get started. This video is divided into sections. If you want to go ahead and skip to any section that you like, you can use these timestamps. So here we are in Photoshop, or I must say Adobe Camera Raw. And this photo was submitted by James Joe Marriott. He's an awesome photographer. Thank you so much, James, for this photo. All right. So whenever you open a raw image inside of Photoshop, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. If that's a JPEG image, you can always access Camera Raw through Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Now we'll just do minimal adjustments over here. Not a lot of adjustments required just increase the highlights just a little bit. Now this depends upon image to image. If I'm increasing the highlights, doesn't mean that you will do the same with your image. Just keep in mind that we have to do minimal adjustments. Okay, so probably to 11, maybe I'll increase the contrast to 18, that's fine. And that's all I have to do in this. If you want to play with the temperature, you can do that, but I think white balance is perfect over here. So yeah, it was perfect. Let's reset that. How do we reset it? Double click on the slider to reset that. You can also double click on anything. Any slider, just double click. It resets the slider. Now, you can also try decreasing the clarity. It adds some softness to the image. So if you take it to the left, as you can see, it makes it soft, just like newborn photos. It looks very nice, but we, we will do skin softening in Photoshop anyway. It's not required. So let's reset that. You can also increase the vibrance. What vibrance does is that it increases the saturation, if you take it to the right, it increases the saturation of just the midtones. Or in other words, we can say that it does not affect the colors of the dark areas. It does not affect the colors of the bright areas. It just amplifies or takes away the colors of midtones, depending upon where you move the slider. So if we move the slider to the right, it increases the color, amplifies the colors in the midtones. So just take it a little bit to the right and that's pretty much it. Once you're satisfied with this, hit open image. But before that, make sure you're working on 16 bit. Make sure it's Adobe RGB 1998 16 bit. If it's not, just click on this and select 16 bit if 8 bits is selected. It's okay. Now let's open that up. Now 16 bit allows you to have much more color information as compared to 8 bits. As the number suggests, 16 is always greater than 8. All right. The first thing that we need to do is to set the structure right. You see, when we are making a clay model, I've given this example before, we set the wireframe first and then on top of it, we set up the clay, on top of it we paint and then we set up the costume of our models, right? So just like that example, we need to set the structure right, the bone structure right first and then work upon the skin and the colors and so on and so forth. So how do we set the structure right? By using liquify. So let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Control or Command J. And you can name this liquify if you want to, just double click on the text and name this L-I-Q-U-I-F-Y liquify. Now I'm giving you a choice. You can change this layer into a smart object, which will allow you to change the values of liquify after the fact. But I'm not going to do it because for me personally, it confuses me. All right, let's go to filter and then directly apply liquify. Okay. Now liquify is for correcting little imperfections. Do not change the originality of the image. But again, it's a personal choice. If you want to do it, go for it. Let's zoom in and let's inspect the image. With the help of the forward warp tool, the shortcut to which is W, let's make the brush a little bigger. You can increase the brush size from here or you can hold the Alt or Option, the right mouse button held, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it right to make it bigger. Let's make it this small and let's zoom in to the portrait. Okay, face. As you can see, this eye is a little open the eye is closed so we need to match that up let's make the brush a little smaller and then let's decrease the pressure to 28 that's fine and then just try to close it down like that you can also use the bracket keys to control the size the right square bracket key to increase it the left square bracket key to decrease it okay that's also convenient Okay, that looks perfect. Let's zoom out and let's have a look at this. So have a look at the before and after by checking on and off the preview. So if we check off the preview, so this is the before, this is the after. It looks pretty good. We can also bring some of it back by clicking on reconstruct and then you can decrease it. 
slowly. This is kind of undo on a slider. If you take it all the way to zero, it reverts back to its original state. And as you gradually increase it, it makes the adjustments that you made. Have a look. Open, close, open, close. It's funny, right? So let's go to this point and I'm kind of happy with this hit. Okay, all right. So this does it for every adjustment. So if you want to just affect one adjustment in one particular area, you can also use the reconstruct too. All right, now let's work our way bottom to the nose. Let's work it out. It's okay. And as you can see, this is clicked on. The reconstruct is selected. If I want to move by holding the spacebar key, if I press it, again reconstruct oh, happens. So we don't want that to happen. So how to let go of this selection? Simply right click on the canvas. It lets go of it, right? Same with the preview. All right, so let's make the nose a little smaller. Let's pull it inside just like this. You can also use the pucker tool to do the same. This side, let's extend it a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, once you have done the eye, do not forget to do the same in the reflection. Otherwise, it will look strange. Now, in the reflection, you don't have to be super careful about this, but make sure to do it and replicate it in the reflection as well. Whatever changes you make over here. Let's pull this up a little bit. Now, let's inspect the whole image and slowly and gradually correct the imperfections, okay? I'm going to fasten this up a little bit. If you want to have a look at the before and after, you can always check in and check off the preview before, after, before, after. Now, if you want to let go of this selection, right click on the canvas because you won't be able to move then. Okay. So if you want to hold the space bar, you won't be able to do, just make sure preview is checked and right click on the canvas. And if you want to move now, once you're zoomed in, hold the space bar, the cursor changes to a hand and then you can move in through the canvas. Always keep in mind that you should make the brush of the size of the thing that you want to move. Okay, so for example, we did the eye. So if we zoom in and if you want to do the eye, so eye is this big, right? So we need to make the brush of that size and then play with it. If the brush is too small, it won't work. If there are little imperfections, then you need to make the brush small. If there are big ones, big things that you want to move, make it big. Pretty obvious. All right, let's inspect the image once more. It looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the complete before and after. So this is the after, this is the before, this is the after, this is the before. Very, very minimal adjustments. Now, once you're satisfied with this, simply hit OK. Now it's time for us to remove the blemishes and the patches. And we're going to do this by using the patch tool. Now you can also use the spot healing brush tool or the healing brush tool, whichever is your favorite. There's no hard and fast tool that you have to use the patch tool or the healing brush tool or the clone stamp tool. It's totally upon you. But why are we using patch tool in this image? Because if we zoom in, let's have a look at the things that we want to remove. Have a look. These are just like patches. These are moderately big. These are not small blemishes that we see in a matured portrait. So that's why we're going to use the patch tool. Now, one of the major demerits of patch tool as of now is that it does not allow you to work on a blank layer if the mode is set to normal. So that's why we're going to make a copy of the liquify layer. Let me show you what happens. So if you choose the patch tool and if you create a blank layer and if you try to do it, make sure the mode is normal. Content aware does allow you. If the mode is normal, if you make a selection of this it will tell you could not use the patch tool because the selected area is empty so you need to make a duplicate of liquify let's delete this blank layer press ctrl or command j and you can name this double click on the text blemishes okay that's fine and simply let's zoom in and just select the patches and then just remove it very simple to do let me tell you the steps here's what to do if you see a patch or anything that you want to remove and replace just make a selection around it just like that with the patch tool selected and then click inside of it and drag it to the area that you want to replace it with and release it once that is done working press ctrl or command d also make sure the mode is normal source is selected transparent is unchecked okay diffusion is five that's the standard number all right let's do it for other areas now let me give you one more tip if you want to see the patches much more exaggerated so that you can remove them easily here's what you do here's what you can do click on the adjustment layer icon and choose black white 
Now decrease the reds all the way to the left. And when you do that, what it does is that it picks up on the reds and decreases its brightness, thus making it very, very visible. Now let's get back to the blemishes layer and then start removing these patches. Okay, very simple to do. Select it, move it, press Ctrl or Command D. Easy, right? Let's decrease the reds even more so that we can see that more properly. Let's get back to blemishes again. Before, after, before, after. It's a good idea to time in again, zoom out and see what area is actually standing out. You don't have to remove all the patches, but the ones that are standing out and are distracting your eye. So press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit the canvas to the screen. On the top portion, we have done most of the job. It looks good. On the back, there are a lot of patches that we need to work on. So let's have a look at the before and after, before, after, before, after. We have removed a lot of them. So at the back, we have a lot to remove. Here, it's a little distracting, so we will try to remove it. Okay, have a look at this. This is total. This area is totally gone. So if I turn that off, there's a red patch on that area. We will try to remove it. It's going to be difficult. So let's try. Let's just try to remove it. I just hope we can. Not sure. Uh, it didn't do a pretty good job, but we will correct that later. I'll tell you one more technique to do it. Do it. <laughs> As you can see, this area has gone completely dark. For this area, we'll get back to black and white and increase the red so that we can see that area and get back to blemishes again. We are pretty much done. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, of course. This is the before. This is the after. Let's delete the black and white adjustment layer. We, we don't need it anymore. So just select it and press the delete key. It simply deletes that. Have a look what a difference it makes. So this is the before. This is the after. Have an overall look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after, before, after. Now it's time for us to do a little bit of skin retouching and correction. We can also use frequency separation to do this, but today we're gonna use an interesting technique that I recently covered in one of my tutorials. It's fun. So first of all, let's go ahead and create a blank new layer, and above that, create one more blank layer, okay? With a blank layer selected, press Control alt shift e Command, Option, Shift, E if you're using a Mac. What that does is that it creates a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas right now. Or in other words, we can say that it creates a stamp visible layer. All right. So press Control, Alt, Shift, E. That creates a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas right now. Or in other words, that creates a stamp visible layer. Now we need to convert this layer into texture. So let's name it first texture. So how do we convert that into texture? First of all, textures do not have colors. We just want texture in this. So let's discolor it or desaturate it. How do we do that? Press Control Shift U, Command Shift U if you're using a Mac. So Control Shift U. That desaturates it. Or you can go to Image Adjustments, Desaturate. It does the same thing. Now, let's apply a high pass filter to it. As you guessed it right, for texture, filter, other, high pass. Okay. Now let's zoom in. Let's apply a high pass of 22. Why 22? Okay, let's break it down. Take the radius all the way to 0 0.1 and start increasing it gradually. Just when you begin to see the skin texture in the area that you want to correct, stop. For example, in this area, there's a shadow that I want to correct. So I will keep on increasing it to the point where I see the skin texture. At this point, we see the shadow. We don't want that much. Just decrease it to the point Okay, we're not going to use 22, we will use 10. Okay, so 10 looks good, probably 12. No, uh, 10 was fine. All right, let's hit okay. 
Now you can also convert that into a smart object and then apply high pass filter that allows you to change the value of high pass after the fact. But then again, it's a personal choice. Let's come back to this layer and name this layer paint. Double click on it and name it pink. Now what you have to do, select the texture layer and change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Now what that does, it increases the sharpness of the image by increasing contrast around the edges. We don't want that. We just need the texture in the areas that we paint or correct. So we will clip it or limit it just to the paint layer. Here's how to do it. Hold the Alt or Option and click on the line between these two. See the cursor changes to a square with an arrow? Click on that. Now whatever you paint, the texture will be limited to that. Even if I turn all of this off, if I paint, if I take a brush and paint any random color, let's choose red. If I keep on painting, see the texture sh shows up in the areas that I paint. You get the idea, right? So let's go back. You don't want to do this. This was just for demo. All right, let's turn all of these on. In the paint layer, take the brush. Let's zoom in and let's try to paint in this area with normal colors. Now ask yourself, once you're doing this, ask yourself, what color do you want that area to be painted in? That's all you need to answer. For example, this area, this shadow area, I want it to be of this color. This shadow area, I want it to be of this color. As simple as that. Select the paint layer and select the eyedropper tool. Make sure sample all layers is selected and make sure you have chosen 11 by 11 or 5 by 5, not point sample. What point sample does is that it takes sample from just one pixel. Now you might accidentally take sample from a noise or a blemish and you don't want to do that. What 11 by 11 does is that it makes a square of 11 by 11 and takes the average color. Okay, so you can increase the size if you want to, but I'm going to choose 11 by 11. Okay for this image. If you have a 50 megapixel image, you might also go to 31 by 31. That's totally upon you. All right, let's take a brush and then simply take a sample and paint. Make sure the flow is around 2 or 3%. I'm going to choose 2% and take a sample from this area. How do we take a sample? Hold the Alt or Option. The cursor changes to an eyedropper tool. Click, take a sample and paint as easy as that. Take a sample and paint. Just ask yourself, what area do you want this area to be painted like? So for example, this area, I want it to be of this color. So I'll take a sample from here and paint here. Since the flow is low, you will have to paint a lot of times to get that color. And it gives you much more softness and control over what you're painting. If the flow was very high, it will be totally flat. So make sure the flow is low. 2%, that's fine. Okay, let's sample this and let's paint. We are pretty much done with this. Let's have a look at the before and after. So let's zoom out a little bit. So this is the after and this is the before. This is the after, this is the before. We will decrease the opacity later. There's a special technique to do it, but let's just work on some other areas. It's too much, I know. We'll decrease it later, not now. I'll tell you why. So there's this area which is looking a little strange. So we need to correct that as well. Let's turn it on, take the brush and let's take a sample from this area and just simply paint. Much better. So let's have a look before, after, before, after. If you paint it extra by mistake, you can also erase that with the eraser. For example, you were painting and you painted a little outside. So no problem at all. Take the eraser and just erase it like that. The extra areas. As easy as that. Okay. Now at this point, in this area, I don't want to decrease the opacity. But in this point, I do want to decrease the opacity. So here's what to do. Create a mask, okay? Create a mask, take the brush, decrease the flow to 2% or 4% and paint black on the areas where you want to decrease the opacity. Again, what is the concept of masks? Black conceals, white reveals. So take the brush, paint black in this area so that will hide some of it. Okay, that looks good. Let's bring back some of these areas. Press D to reset the swatches to black and white and paint white in this area again to bring it back. Yeah, that looks wonderful. Let's have a look at the before and after, before, after, before, after. We really did correct that. You can also correct this area if you want to and take your time to do it. Now, after that, you can make a group of these two by holding the control or command, selecting the other one, press control or command G. 
You can name this anything you like. I'll name it skin retouch one. That's fine. Now let's do some skin softening. By the way, I already have an action for skin softening. If you're interested and if you want to download it, check the links in the description. It just makes your process much more faster, but I'm going to show you step by step on how to do that. First of all, let's create a stamp visible layer by pressing Control Alt Shift E. Command Option Shift E. Okay. Now let's name it skin softening. Invert it by pressing Control or Command I and change the blend mode of this one to vivid light. But before you change the blend mode, what you can do, you can convert this into a smart object. Why? Because that way you will be able to change the values of texture later after the fact in real time. That's going to be fun. Okay. So convert that into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Then just simply change the blend mode from normal to vivid light. Now it's taking some time because this is a 16 bit image. So keep in mind, eight bit images process very quickly. 16 bit images take some time. Normal to vivid light. Okay. It looks strange. I know, but then again, go to filter other high pass. Now inside of high pass, here's where the fun starts. Increase the value to the point where everything merges in and there's no patch, no red patch like that and everything just blends in and is so nice and seamless. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose probably 22 and hit OK. Now this is looking strange. Again, you have to apply one more thing called Gaussian Blur. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Take the value all the way to 0 0.1 and increase it gradually. Just stop at the point where the skin texture starts showing up. Starts. I underline that again. Starts showing up. If you take it all the way to the right, it will definitely show up. Just stop at the point where it starts showing up. So we're going to go ahead and choose probably 7.5 or 7.6. Let's go for 7.6 or 7.7. .7. It's okay. All right. Now let's zoom in. We don't want the softening all over the image and the edges look funky. You don't want that. Let's create a negative mask and then just paint in the areas. So hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask button. This creates a negative mask. Take the brush and simply paint on the areas and stay away from the edges. Okay, just like that with white and make sure the flow is 100% because we can decrease the opacity later. Just make sure that you stay away from the edges. If you accidentally paint on the edge, see, it gives you the ugly glow. We don't want that. So simply change the foreground color to black by pressing X and paint that area and press X again to bring the foreground color to white and then resume your painting. And if you want to reset the swatches to black and white, if that, that there's a random color selected, you can press D to reset the swatches. D for dog, D for donkey, D for I don't know what. All right, simply just paint. If you want to see which areas you have painted, you can press the backward slash key. And if you do that, red are the areas which you have not painted. Normal colored areas are the areas in which you have painted. So you can just keep a check that you have not painted on the edges and just on the skin. Okay. okay. Paint the remaining areas that is left out. And if there's an edge that's painted, make sure you erase that. That's pretty okay. I'll just erase this area, that area. And that is okay. As you can see, there's a little bit of area left. So we're going to just paint that. So change the color to white and let's just paint this area. This was left out. This was left out. So that's a great way to check which areas are left out. Okay, that's fine. Press the backward slash key again to let go of it. And there you go. There you have skin retouched, skin softened it actually. So let's have a look at the before and after. So before, after, before, after. If you want to decrease the opacity, you can. So let's decrease it just a bit, not so much, probably 85. Let's keep it 90. That's fine. Time for us to do a little bit of color correction. As you can see, there are some areas like this where it's too red or too magenta. We need to correct that first and then apply an overall warmth to the image. So let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Let's make a selection of just that color. Let's zoom in, press control or command plus 
okay and with the hand tool right over there just click once here okay it says that it falls into the red category now we just need to affect that particular area how to do that increase the hue all the way to the right take the hue all the way to the right and increase the saturation just for identification purposes as to which areas are being affected now let's narrow this down narrow this slider down now the top bar is the color spectrum of the image and the bottom bar is the result so for example we are affecting the reds in the image right now as you can see this area is selected just look at the top bar if I change the hue the bottom bar changes in that particular area which means that we are selecting that particular range of color and modifying that in this case changing the hue take it all the way to the right and we're gonna just affect that particular area let's make it even more narrower and move it with the middle okay now that's making a good selection let's take it a little bit to the right okay now you can use the outside sliders to increase the softness in the transition between the area that is selected and the area that is not selected or targeted so, so if you move it it just makes it smooth just like fuzziness inside of select color range it's just the same thing okay it's pretty okay let's take it a little bit to the left all right now let's bring back everything to zero 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 this one now change the hue let's take it to the right and let's see what it does wow it does take away all those reds and those magentas so have a look before after before after it's too much i know let's go a little bit to the right now as you can see it's also taking away the reds from the cheek which we don't want so here's what to do select the mask take the brush make sure the foreground color is black and then just simply paint in black in this particular area just like that and paint back in the lips because we want that now let's add an overall warmth or pinkish hue to the image right to the skin so let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer and take the slider to the left just like that isn't that beautiful if you want you can increase the saturation but just a little bit and have a look at this so if you make a group of both of them we'll make that later because there's one more adjustment that we need to apply okay so let's have a look at the before and after of this before after it really does help if you want to turn it off you can turn that off and see what it does see a lot of pink and magenta we don't want that let's turn this on now it's great now let's add some rich skin tone to the image to do that create a solid color adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color select any skin tone that you like we can change this afterwards don't worry about that okay hit okay and then change the blend mode from normal to multiply there we go and we don't want it so much so let's decrease the opacity to let's say 48 and just paint on the skin we don't want it on the head gear or whatever she or he is wearing so select the mask press ctrl or command i this inverts the mask take the brush since the background is completely black we don't have to worry about it so much just you don't have to be accurate make sure the foreground color is white and just paint in the skin don't worry about the color right now just don't okay do not forget the reflection because that's important Okay, we did remove the blemishes from this, but we didn't remove the patches from the reflection. So make sure you do not forget to do that. But nobody pays so much attention and nobody would notice that. Okay. I did it very quickly, but you take your time. Let's have a look before, after, before, after. You need to be careful around the headgear. So let's paint in black. We don't want this area to be painted in. And now let's go ahead and change the color. It's too much. So double click on this one. And... You can change the colors by hue saturation and lightness separately so if you want to increase the saturation let's get to saturation which is s and take it up to increase the saturation if you want to decrease the saturation take it down so let's increase the saturation to this point that looks good brightness if you want to increase the brightness let's do that increase the brightness all the way to the top if you want to change the hue you can do that as well so i'm going to go ahead and choose something like this it's okay now if you want decrease the opacity alrighty now doesn't that look wonderful maybe you will want to increase it just a little bit now let's make a group of all of these three by holding the shift 
make sure the first one is selected and select the last one which affects the color okay and press ctrl or command g and name it color correction if you want to or color grading whatever you want to name it okay before after before after so let's have a look at the overall before and after before we move forward before after before after if you think that's too much again that's why we have created a group you can decrease the opacity let's decrease it to 60 or 70 percent okay that's fine now let's work on the lights of the image and to do that the best tool is the curves so let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves let's increase the brightness of the midtones by taking it up just a little bit not that much there we go okay and let's try to take down the shadows what kind of an effect it does it looks pretty good before after before after let's decrease the opacity that's kind of too much yes that looks wonderful now at the background there are a few lines that we want to remove it's very simple to remove let's create one more curves adjustment layer okay and then simply Take this slider from the left to the right. Gone. Gone. But it also affects this part of the head. Have a look. Before, after. We don't want that to happen. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, and then just simply paint on these particular areas. Take the brush and paint with white inside of the mask. Just like that. And it's gone. Boom. Isn't that so clear and wonderful? Now let's add a little bit of dimension to it. So if you want to add some kind of shadow or surface effect, I don't know what to call it, but let's create one more curves adjustment layer and let's take it down. Okay. Now we don't want it all over the image. We just want it in this particular area as a shadow or something like that. Okay. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush and just paint with white in this area, just beneath him like that it creates a nice surface effect erase it from the extra areas if you have to and erase it from here okay but it does give it a very nice effect have a look before after before after you can decrease the opacity if you want to okay there we go now we are done with the curves let's make a group of all of them so you can also hold the control or command and select both of them the remaining ones and then press control or command g you can name this curves or light or whatever you want i'm gonna name this curves let's have a look before after before after now at the end after we have done everything it's time for us to sharpen the image now there are tons of ways of sharpening images but i'm going to show you the high pass method okay so Control Alt Shift E. It is required that you create a stamp visible layer. Control Alt Shift and E. Command Option Shift and E. Okay. Now desaturate it. Control Shift U. Command Shift U. Make two or three copies of it. I'm going to make three copies of it and turn off these copies. Select this one. Go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And this one is for the fine details. Let's zoom in quite a bit. And this one is just for the fine textures. So I'm going to decrease the value 0.1. Just when the fine textures start showing up, I'm going to stop. So let's choose probably 1.9, 1.5. Let's choose 1.5 for this one. Hit OK. And change the blend mode from normal to, as you have guessed it right, overlay. Now, this will be all over the image. So before, after, just a little bit of sharpening. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see before after okay the second one let's turn it on and then go to filter other high pass now this one is for the bigger textures so let's choose three for this one this one is for the eyes and all the other stuff for the lips and hits okay and then <clears throat> normal to overlay now we don't want it all throughout the image just on the eyes and several other areas like the headgear so on and so forth so hold the alt or option click on the mask button this creates a negative mask out of it take the brush and just simply paint in white in the areas that you want to sharpen for example the eye do not paint on these lines just on the eyes okay we don't want to exaggerate or bring up the wrinkles in a child right the lips or maybe the headgear just a little bit sharpen it up and probably the skin texture the hairs right here bring it all up do not forget the shadow okay that looks great now for this one we're gonna choose something very big go to filter other then high pass 
for this one let's choose something big let we can choose six if you want to a good way is to go double but I'm gonna choose 6.2 that's fine and change the blend mode to overlay and then again create a negative mask just the places where you need that extra sharpness take the brush just dab once in this particular area dab once that's too much on for that area maybe on the nose we want some maybe lips and that's it that's all the sharpness that we needed and we're pretty much done with the image is there any other place where we need sharpness I don't think so okay I think that's I think we are done with it let's make a group of all of these three by holding the control or command you can also use shift let's press shift and select the last one of the sharpness press control or command G and you can name it sharpen now we are pretty much done with the image let's have a look at the overall before and after so this is the before this is the after you can also apply color lookup tables or a color effect stylized image if you want but the main retouching is done before after before after so that's how we retouch newborn photos in Photoshop now that's not the only way this is just one of the million ways to do it now one of the questions which you might have which I anticipated is that Unmesh why didn't you do dodging and burning you see not every image requires for you to do everything for this image it was not much required but you can do it as well all right let's do a quick little recap so first of all we just set the structure right by applying liquify okay then we remove the blemishes using the patch tool then we did a little bit of skin retouching inside of skin retouching we just created a blank layer and then a stamp visible layer and then we converted that into a texture layer by applying high pass and then desaturated that and limited it just to the paint layer we did the skin retouching and after that we did skin softening now there's an action for skin softening you can download that links are in the description just paint on the areas stay away from the edges and then color correction using hue saturation adjustment layers first of all we removed all of the extra reds or the magentas then we added warmth then we added one more layer of color to the image rich skin tone to the image then curves we controlled the lighting we removed the background we made it completely black and we added that shadow kind of effect just beneath the baby all right always save the sharpness for the end at the end we created layers for sharpness for different areas and there you go so that's pretty much it for this video hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pics imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating